In this Throne in Liberty video, I'm going to go over every single currency in the game and what it's used for. Now there are many of them all do different things, there might even be some you haven't realised are actually there waiting for you to use and well you could be missing out because you could get something you may indeed need to help you out with your progression. How's it going guys my name is DPJ and I'm giving away 1000 plus solution to every couple of days. Now to win it's as simple as this, drop a like on this video, leave me a comment down below and make sure you are subbed. I'll pick winners from the comment section and announce them on tomorrow's video. So good luck everybody. Now though some of the following people might not refer to as an actual currency. All that we cover today for the most part are used in order to purchase or unlock something else used for progression. So let's get into it people and the first one we'll talk about is probably the most popular and one I'm pretty sure everyone knows about and that is Solent. So Solent is used for most things in regards to upgrading gear, purchasing things from vendors, basically this game's main currency, this game's gold. It's something you come across in abundance and something you spend in abundance too. Okay, so next up guys, we have Lucent. So Lucent is used to purchase items from the auction house, uh, the shop, etc, etc. It's the currency in Throne and Liberty you purchase for that real life money and buy things from the store in regards to cosmetics and even more. It's also a currency you can make in game via the auction house and selling things you've played and farmed for. So yeah, that is what Lucent is. Okay, so next up guys, we have Ornate Coins. So ornate coins are earned via daily mail from the devs and collecting pages scattered across the map. Now these are currency used within the shop, uh, come down to the ornate coins section. There's actually some very, very useful things here you can purchase for these ornate coins. So if you didn't realize about these ones guys, get to it because you've probably got loads stacked up, get to spending. Next up guys, we have contract coins. So contract coins are received for doing various different types of bounties, like resistance bounties, allied contracts and so forth. Contract coins can then be spent with the contract coin merchant, where you can purchase limited things, things are limited to daily or even monthly sales. Now if you collect 1500 of these, you can purchase the precious epic chest, which will allow you to pick out an individual epic item you may indeed need. So yes, they are contract coins. Next up guys, we have the Dimensional Contract Tokens. So Dimensional Contract Tokens are tokens used for entering co-op dungeons with some costing 120 to enter, while others like the level 50 dungeons costing 300 of these Dimensional Contract Tokens. Now you are given 900 per day on reset, but these are quickly gone, so you can't see most players want the devs to basically give us more of, give us more ways of earning these. Say so currency which is also limited onto how many you can hold and that number is 4500. So yes guys, with 900 given to you a day, you're basically limited to doing three level 50 dungeons per day until you're fully out of these. You can let them stack though up to 4500 like I said, but either or guys that still isn't many level 50 dungeons if you're chasing that end game gear. Next up guys, we have the Abyssal Contract Tokens. So Abyssal Contract Tokens are the currency which you earn via doing various different things, from co-op dungeons to resistance contracts and a few other things. They are also a currency which is automatically used within open world dungeons which allow enemies within them to drop you gear. You also earn weapon mastery XP at the same time. Now there is a limit to how many of these you can hold and that is 20,000. But these do quickly go down when you're running those open world dungeons and slaying those enemies. But yes again guys, this is a currency you need in order to we can enter the dungeons either or. But in regards to getting these enemies to drop you loot and the items you need to progress, you need these, you need to have these in your inventory. And again they are automatically used upon you taking out enemies within these open world dungeons. Next up guys, we have guild coins. So guild coins are a currency you can only obtain once you are in a guild. Now I believe there are two ways of getting guild coins. The first is by donating to the guild, whether that be gold, i.e. solent or materials. The other way you can get guild coins, I do believe, is participating 
in those dynamic events. Now this is a currency you can then use within the guild merchants who purchase things like mana and health potions. Next up guys we have arena coins. So arena coins are a currency you can earn up to 6 per week and you do this by playing the arena mode which is a 3v3 pvp mode. You can then guys use these, well this currency with the arena merchants to purchase epics and more. Next up guys we have star crystals. So star crystals are a currency you get from the battle pass whether you paid for it or not. Both tracks will reward you the star crystals. Now once you hit a level 50 on the battle pass every challenge you then complete I believe rewards you even more. Star crystals are then used within the Xena Star Shop located within the Battle Pass screen, Battle Pass menu, where here guys you can purchase some very useful things like Solent, Trait Stones and more. So check them out. Next up guys we have Dimensional Soul Shards. So Dimensional Soul Shards are the currency you can get from the Dimensional Soul Shard chests. These normally I do believe only come from the Battle Pass. And once you open up these chests, you get to pick from one of the six individual shards. Now these shards are named after the level 50 dungeon bosses, the co-op dungeon bosses, uh, which is another place you can actually earn these soul shards. Uh, so each dungeon boss at level 50 when you complete them, I believe, gives you four of these soul shards. So that's pretty cool. Now once you've accumulated a load of these, you can then use these within the crafting vendors to purchase those epic chests. Now 80 of a single shard is needed to purchase a chest which contains certain epic loot you can also get from the corresponding co-op dungeon bosses. You can also use 10 of all 6 shards totaling 60 to purchase a dimensional essence. This can then be used to purchase salvation chests, we can then pick out epic gear. Next up guys we have Abyss Currency. So Abyss Currency is obtained via you doing Allied Resistance Forces contracts. Now these contracts you purchase from the Sandry's Merchant where you can purchase 6 of these items with each item when you open them rewarding you 4 contracts each. So weekly guys you can get 24 of the Allied Resistance Forces contracts. Now when you've done 40 of the Allied Resistance Forces contracts, you can then guys use them at any crafting vendor to purchase an epic chest where you can then select your rewards. So yes guys, one Allied Resistance Forces contract will reward you one Abyss currency um, and when you have 40 of these, you use them at any crafting vendor to pick a chest and then select your own reward. Next up guys we have the Special Resistance Medals. So the Special Resistance Medal is an item you get for participating in World Bosses. Obviously World Bosses are a limited spawn time event which you can check out via your map menu, check out the actual uh, schedule of when they're spawning in. Now in regards to getting these you don't actually have to do the most damage to the boss uh, or whatever. All you do is need to participate upon you participating minimum you'll get a chest within this chest guys you'll get a special resistance medal at least now when you have 40 of these guys you can then head to certain crafting vendors which will allow you to use these in replacement to craft a lithograph having that lithograph then for that said item you've then created with these uh special resistance medals then go ahead and craft it really is as simple as that so a good thing to know about Okay, so lastly guys, and I weren't even sure if I was going to add this, uh, but it is the Mystic Keys. So here goes. So Mystic Keys are purchased from the Contract Coin Merchant. It limited to five of these per day. And what they do is when you have these in your inventory, you'll get little symbols appear upon your map. When you go to them, it's like a little red fiery ball. Upon you picking this up guys, there's a chance that a bigger portal in a nearby area will spawn in and if you look on your map guys, you'll see like a little uh, symbol, around that symbol you'll see like a little blue vicinity, within that vicinity is a larger portal, in this portal guys, if you get it, you'll get even better loot, that's basically what Mystic Keys are, again you're limited to only 5 of these per day, but there we have it guys, all currencies I can think of, in Throne and Liberty. If I've missed one, please let me know down below. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, it really helps out. If you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. And hopefully, guys, I will see you on that next one.